So when I first heard about the name, the differential equation, I had zero idea what that was about. I had no clue, no connection to my robotics project. But somehow, yeah, these days I'm using the differential equations quite often. So what did change my attitude towards it? Did I just wake up at a moment and then all of a sudden I want to solve one of the millennium problems like Navier-Stokes equation? Or did I just want to research the cure for the cancer? No. I just wanted to write down the code to fly my drone. And that turned out to be the differential equation. What the heck am I talking about? Let me show you how ridiculously simple it is to use the differential equation. And if you're new to here, I'm Elliot, I'm a robotics engineer. Now, can you add all these numbers from number 1 to 100? I don't care about the answer, I would care more about how you'd calculate this. And this is the best known human way to calculate all this sum for the larger number. If you pair this, this is going to be 101 and then 2 plus 99 is going to be another 101 and then you just add all these and then pair them and then calculate this by multiplying the number of the pairs. And this is a popular story of Gauss. As the story goes, the young Gauss was around like 10 in the younger age during 18th century, I believe. So when his teacher tasked the entire class with summing the integers from 1 to 100 or whatever the numbers, just to keep the class busy. And then Gauss quickly realized this pattern of pair and then he just finished the task. And then this is like the virtue of the math class in the modern day classroom, right? And honestly, if I were in the same classroom with him, I'd never be able to find this pattern. I believe I barely counted the numbers from 1 to 10. Anyway, a good news for robotics project, we use computers and the computers use for loop. That is, you don't have to think like Gauss. And to me, another misleading aspect of this typical modern day differential equation class is about this. So they just give you these kind of equations and then, hey, the rule of the game is to find out the function that satisfies this and then typically e to the x, the exponential function, is the basic solution to the differential equation and they say this is the differential equation. Yeah, that's true, but honestly saying nowadays when I use the differential equations in my robotics project, I don't really solve this differential equation. Instead, I just used the differential equation, whoever solved it first, and I just use it and then implemented Python. And also, I'm not genuinely interested in solving the differential equations like Millennium Problems, like Navier-Stokes equation. I'm not interested in those. So the rule of the game with differential equation is good for you mathematicians, but it doesn't really intrigue me. Why? Like I said, I just want to fly my drone. That's all. So if I look at this position function for free fall. So a uh, drone is an object and any object on this planet Earth is subject to the gravity and that it will free fall if I just drop it. So I put a propeller so that it can defy the gravity literally. Let me just start from this position equation from physics 101. And then that's the typical chapter one version of the position for the free fall for any velocity and acceleration. And then if I implement this in Python, I just need these two lines of code and if I use this literally, if I implement this, you have this for loop. My question is, which one would you use for your computer? My answer is this guy because first, it's simpler. I need one, two, three, four mathematical operations. However, using this analytical solution of the physics 101, you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mathematical operations. That's the first reason. And then if I simply convert this for loop into math, this single line of math is the differential equation and they are exactly the same for the velocity part at least. The so v dot, which is dv dt, is the acceleration. And then that acceleration for the free fall is same thing as gravitational acceleration. And then again, if I expand it into the code, it's just going to be like that v dot dt plus previous v, which is this line. And then if, if I actually compare that with this code with analytical solution, the result is the same. Like blue line is the 
differential equation based implementation of the free fall and then the red line is using the physics 101 analytical solution then what else is the benefit of choosing the differential equation formation well that's because i'm an engineer i need to put the thrust force so if i want to add thrust i can just simply add this part however if you are using analytical solution like this at the very moment let's say at t0 i just turn on my propeller to go up to generate the thrust force to upward so that i can fly instead of just free falling and then i have to divide a case up until t0 i used just g the gravitational acceleration and then all of a sudden i have to divide a case to implement my acceleration like this and then obviously there will be air resistance and all this noise from the propeller so you need to actually adjust the propeller's propulsion force in real time like 400 hertz which means 400 times per second so whenever you change the thrust force are you going to divide a case forever no you don't want to do that obviously if you just do this everything is solved you don't have to change any code so Again, if you write that down in academic paper or mathematical notation, it's just like this, V dot is G. And then when you back implement from this math, you just use this kind of for loop. That's it, that's the differential equation I use every day. And I told you it is ridiculously simple to use the differential equation. And then if I actually compare this to add the thrust force like this, and then if I plot that, the green line is actually the graph of the position with the propeller turned on then it's not falling it is maintaining the altitude at 100 meters and some of you might be wondering then how do you even calculate the thrust force well even before integrating every even before integrating your robot you just pull out the propeller and then measure the thrust force and then the measure the thrust force then you can calculate the required thrust force at the very moment in this full loop iteration to wrap up, in the most practical aspect, unlike the math classroom, you don't really need to solve the differential equations. Instead, you put the differential equation as it is, then you implement that equation into code. In fact, the most often time I have to think about the theoretical concept of the differential equation is to read and write the papers. Other than that, not too much. Maybe, what a shame. By now, some people may hate me, like humble engineer, right? And in fact, I often study and review the math when I need to write a paper to explain the code. Otherwise, the people in the academia seem not understanding the code I release in the Git repo. For me, it is the other way, in fact, but Anyway, that's why and how I use the diffix. And please do let me know how you're using the differential equations in your robotics project in the comment section down below. And if you like to see more of this kind of content, please like it and subscribe my channel like always. My name is Elliot and I'll see you around.